Hey everyone, what is going on? Today is gonna to be a little bit of a fun video. We are going to take the all new Sony Xperia Pro I, their new smartphone, one inch sensor, the touting, all these great specs in it, right? We're gonna put it against the all new Sony A7 IV. Now I got them both in here for review. A7 IV here, Xperia Pro I here. Right? Right. Okay, so we all know that this, the A7 IV will probably be the best camera. You know, we got a full frame sensor, 30 plus megapixels in this. You've got the all the new algorithm with the autofocusing, all that comes into play, right? Right. But what does the Xperia Pro I give us? It gives us pro cinema modes, gives us pro video modes, gives us pro photography modes, eye tracking, uh, face track, all that kind of stuff comes into play with this. So you're getting a lot of that technology that we're getting into the Sony Alpha cameras is coming into the Xperia Pro I. But anyway, what we're gonna be doing is meeting Zaki over at the National Arts Gallery here in Singapore. We're gonna walk around, shoot some night shots, see how these perform in low light, Lightroom. I'll come back to you with my final thoughts. All right, guys, we're at the Light Tonight Festival. Is that right? Light Tonight, that's it, at the National Gallery. It's like an art festival week here in Singapore, so we're actually gonna be taking some photos here. We're gonna go around, take some night shots, some low light shots, of course, with the A7 IV and the Xperia Pro I, I for imaging, because this is packed with a one inch sensor. But we know the lens doesn't cover the entire sensor. We'll get into all that details in just a bit. But anyway, we're gonna do some low light photography, some video, see how these two perform. And you get to decide for yourself, which one would you want to own? Okay, so first here, I am going to take a photo of this little installation. Now on the a7 IV, I have a G Master 35 1.4 lens. Now because Stereo Pro I doesn't have a 1.4 aperture, only does maximum two, I'm gonna set this to two, so we're, well, you know, on even playing fields. Let's see how this goes. I'm too close, all I get is the night, the light, and that's all I see. Let's get the stereo. Not too bad with this 30 plus megapixel sensor. Now we're gonna go into the Xperia Pro I. One of the cool things about this system, of course, is you're getting a lot of the Sony tech that you're seeing in the A7 IV, the Alpha 1, the A9 II, it's all coming into this. And then you also have your different modes here. So if I wanna go into, just like you would get on a Sony camera, your shutter, your manual, program auto, auto, you can go to basic. If you just want basic mode, let the camera do everything for you. You don't have to think. Anyway, Zach, where are we going next? We're gonna go there. there. What's, what's that? Artsy stuff. That's art? Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right. Alrighty. Wow, what's that, man? Do we got music on this too? That's pretty cool, man. Going right into this. Okay, so now we're doing a vlogging test here to see how this looks and sounds with this one inch sensor. Now I'm using not the cinema mode, but the pro mode. There's two versions of the video modes here on the Xperia Pro I. The cinema version, we'll try that in just a bit, but obviously you don't vlog in with cinema phones. But this mode is for, supposed to emulate, let's say the A7S III, the A7 IV, more of those prosumer Sony cameras. But we can see how the uh, audio is, the dynamic range. There's Zaki right behind me. Yeah. How it focuses. Let's see that. Does it focus on you, Zaki? Back to me. Should have eye tracking. Let's see how this rolls. Okay, so now we are trying with the cinema mode here. 4K 69 aspect ratio, Venice CS profile on this. You can't shoot flat. You can't do like S log, one, two, or three. Not in the phone yet, maybe in an update, but uh, unless we're trying this out. So it won't look as uh, punchy or as vibrant as what we saw on the pro video side of things. But unless it's more for the cinema, the cinema look. So yeah, that's, you know what the funny thing is when I'm doing the comparison like this, the EVF makes everything look washed out. And the phone screen looks so good. Again, I know that's obviously, you know, that's not representative of the actual photo. I am shooting in RAW on this versus of course, you know, RAW and JPEG, but still, it's, uh, it's a little disheartening when you look through the EVF of this thing. One 
One thing about this phone, and we're at a bus stop right now, so it's loud, right? There's so many buttons on this phone that activate things from the dedicated camera button, the custom button, the power button, that it's very easy for this phone to activate in your pocket. So I've taken this out of my pocket a few times already, and the camera's already on, which shouldn't be the case, because it's activated a few times. Hopefully, no sensitive information went out or did it. So now we're gonna do a camera test with this neon light behind us. You know, this massive capital theater. This is pretty iconic here for a lot of us photographers in Singapore. Let's see how both of these cameras perform with it. Any blowout, how much detail can they hold? Let's find out. All right, Zachy, A7 IV. A couple things that are very difficult to use on this phone is that there's no on-screen button to take a photo. You have to use the manual, the button on the side of the phone, which makes it very cumbersome at times, especially as you saw I'm doing portrait mode and I want to do landscape. Landscape is fine. Portrait mode, I want to press here, but there's nothing that I can see on the screen that allows me to do that. So this is very awkward right here. I got to hold it like this to take the photo portrait mode. Now when I go to basic mode, I get that button back, okay? But the problem is, I lose all that customization that I had. So it would have been nice if Sony would allow us to have, you know, that on-screen button even in pro mode because this phone is long and slender. It's not the easiest thing to hold in portrait mode. Anyway, small thing. Okay, you're gonna do a lightsaber sh I'm gonna take photos of Zaki. Closer to you, bring the wand closer to you. Closer, make it a lightsaber. Oh. There we go, I can see Zaki now. Now, with Xperia Pro I, we go ISO. Here we go. Let me try 50 millimeters because there's no depth of field on this. Tough. Interesting, very interesting. The phone's eye tracking works better than the a7 IV. Who would have thought that? It got your face, the a7 IV got your face, Zachy, but the phone was able to recognize the eye right away. Now, in terms of depth of field, no competition. But I gotta say, the colors out of the phone are not bad. I'm pretty impressed with it. Now, this is just by looking at this 4K OLED display. What we'll do now, I'm thinking, Zach, is we'll go back, I'll put these in the computer, I'll edit some of the better photos out, and then I'll show you guys the comparisons between the Xperia Pro Y and the A7 IV, and I'll come back to you with my final thoughts. This video is brought to you by Secret Lab. Here at Geek Culture, we love our Secret Lab chairs, especially the all-new 2022 Titan Evo with its revamped four-way lumbar system for enhanced back support. If the PU Leather 2.0 isn't your cup of tea, then consider the all-new Soft Weave, even more soft and breathable than before. The chair comes in more colors, including this lovely frost blue. The Titan Evo is even magnetized, allowing the head pillow to stick on the headrest without straps. Of course, there are even more new features, so do check them out at secretlab.co. All right, guys, we are back in Lightroom now, taking a look at images here from the A7 IV and, of course, the Xperia Pro I. Now, as we know, look, a cell phone, smartphone, however you want to call it, camera is not going to best a full-frame camera system. It's just not. But, of course, it's about ease of use. It's the camera that's in your pocket that's the most important and are you able to capture the images that you want the details, the clarity, et cetera, et cetera. Now, when we use smartphone cameras and we shoot in bright daylight, everything looks great, everything is sharp because low ISO performance, everything comes into play. But when we go into lower light situations, how do these images stack up against a full frame camera sensor? I mean, we know who's gonna win, but just how are they gonna stack up? So let's do a little bit of a comparison with you real quick on that. Then I'll show you some images from the a7 IV as well to show you the low light performance. Okay. Let's go to this one here real quick. This is from the A7 IV here. You can see that. And ISO 435 millimeters F2 because I will shot at F2 majority of the time because that's the fastest aperture that's on the Xperia Pro I. It doesn't go down to 1.4 or anything else like that, so I stuck it at F2. And as you can see right here, the image is really, really sharp, uh, tack sharp. And as you can see, the noise is pretty well controlled. I mean, obviously 400 ISO, so it's gonna be relatively good. Now let's go to the Xperia Pro I. All right, things didn't pair out so well, did they? Okay, ISO 800, F2.4, one over 50th of a second. Now, this was on auto mode for the most part, so it decided to capture it at this point. But as you can see right here, the noise, even at 800, is really, really bad. Now, I could throw this into opacity noise and I could clean up a little bit, but it just goes to show you uh, 
it is a significant difference. Plus, you don't see the depth of field as much as you would on the uh, a7 IV. Again, full frame, larger lens, et cetera, et cetera. But if you were to put this on social media, clean it up a little bit, put a little bit of noise reduction on there, it would pass. No issues at all. As a matter of fact, I'm zooming in, but if I hold it back here, it looks good. And that's how people are really seeing your images on social media. So I'll give this one a pass. Okay, to be fair here, it's not all, uh, you know, roses here with the a7 IV sensor. Look, we're shooting this image here, kind of seeing a lot of noise creeping in here. And I don't know why we're at, we're at ISO 1600. And this is pretty significant here. And I'm shooting at 35 millimeters at F2, one over one hundredths of a second. And uh, that's a lot of noise. Again, it can clean that up in topaz denoise, but still a little bit more than I was expecting on that, especially at ISO 1600. Let's kind of zoom in again a little bit here. You do lose a little bit of detail. I brought that back through my edit a bit, but still, uh, yeah, could be better. But you know, for the most part, not too bad, right? Here's one last uh, testament to show you the difference between the two. Here's the a7 IV here. And this was ISO 125, 35 millimeters F2. Now this is gonna be ISO 125, so it's gonna be tack sharp, right? Trying to capture the lights, these neon lights, these LED lights in here to give a sense of how it captures the tonality of that. Now this has been edited slightly. Let me show you the before edit, after edit, before edit, after edit. Okay, let's go to the Xperia. ISO 160, um, this is at six millimeters F2, okay. Uh, again, smartphone, so we're we gonna do on that. Um, I did crop that in just a tad bit because it was quite a large, kind of went on a wide on that, but nonetheless, let's take a look. I gotta say, not too bad at all. You're not gonna get the same tonality on these kind of small sensors, especially when it comes to these bright lights, this harsh contrast of lights, but this does handle it relatively well, again. And there's pretty, there's some good play in these files here. Look at the details I'm able to pull out through the highlights and the shadows. This is not bad. This is not bad at all for a smartphone. I mean, is it the best I'm seeing out of any smartphone out there? No, but this is good comparing it between these two. So there you have it. I mean, very, very impressive. All right, guys, so those are my uh, thoughts between the two images here. We'll show you some video samples and then we'll go to my final thoughts. All right, so as you saw in Lightroom, obviously the Sony a7 IV is the better camera out of the two. But let's talk about the Xperia Pro I for a moment here. Now, I really liked this smartphone on paper. Even in person, it's really well built, beautiful. The 4K display is awesome. It's got the Snapdragon 888. It is stacked with all the latest specs. However, you're not utilizing that full one inch sensor. Why? Because the lens isn't big enough to cover the entire sensor. So you're basically about the same as other smartphones out there. There are some caveats to this. First off, it's the image quality. As we saw in low light, it doesn't really hold up. When we go to pro cinema mode, we're using the Venice CS profile and all that kind of stuff. It just really falls apart. It doesn't look good in low light. Everything looks mushy. It looks blurry. It's not sharp. And you don't get to utilize all that great autofocusing um, algorithms that Sony put into their you know, alpha line, which you get in the pro video mode. And this is where I think Sony's gone a little bit confusing with the phone here. They were essentially made this a pocketable camera that also is a phone in my personal opinion, but you have to choose three different apps to do various different things. Why not put it all in one app, Sony, and make it a lot easier? You know, a tab, tab for pro, you know, tab for cinema. And if you wanna go to photography, boom, you're right into there. Also, there's no on-screen button if you wanna take uh, any sort of shots with that within, in the photography mode, or even in video, you have to use the on-camera button, uh, the camera button on the body, which is a little bit um, perplexing at times. Now, yes, you can go into your basic mode and utilize that in the photo mode, but, why not have that button there? Because if we want to shoot portrait mode as I was trying to do sometimes or I want to do a landscape, I have that option using this on-screen button versus the physical button because it can be a little bit cumbersome. Anyway, uh, overall though, I think Sony's on the right track with the Xperia Pro I, but I don't think it's quite there yet. I would say if you want to make a pro uh, smartphone camera system, 
we don't care if there's a large hump on the back of it. We would rather have a full-size lens to cover that sensor versus a small lens that doesn't utilize that one inch sensor to its maximum capabilities. Now let's talk about the a7 IV. Now, a lot of people love this camera and I do too. I think it's gonna be, this is gonna be the main seller and the Alpha series for a lot of people out there. This is the camera they're gonna go to. Now I do love that they have increased the megapixels on this. I do love they have the new menu system, the flip out rotatable display. Basically it is an a7S III body, but now where you have an a7 IV system in it. Now you do have that customizable dial, which I really do enjoy which is nice. So you can customize this to your liking. I like this and hopefully they will add this into other cameras in the future. Sometimes they test some of these things on low end cameras to see how it performs and how people take to it. And then they obviously they add it in the future to the higher end camera systems. But I think the a7 IV is a really nice photographer's camera. It's a really nice videographer's camera. You're not gonna get that 4K 120, but to be honest with you, do you really need 4K 120? If you're doing a lot of your content on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube for that matter, does it make a difference? I mean, there's an argument to be had, yes or no, right? It's always great to have more resolution so you can punch in if you need to, but I think if you are a seasoned videographer or someone that knows your camera systems, knows how to maximize what is inside the camera, you're gonna be able to, to do some wonderful things with the a7 IV. Also the new color profiles to this, the new autofocusing algorithm, you are really lined up for having a fantastic camera that's gonna be I mean, it's gonna last you for a good few years, like the a7 III before. For a lot of you out there, I would say the a7 IV, it is a fantastic all-around camera and you're gonna get some great images as you saw here in Lightroom and as you've seen in this video. So anyway, those are my thoughts on the two. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What did you think of the Xperia Pro Y? What did you think of the a7 IV? Any questions you have, of course, ask me. I will try to answer them for you. With that, guys, subscribe to the channel if you can. Follow us on Facebook. Stay safe out there and I'll chat to you soon. Take care.